Get out right out of your bed, that's your quicksand. Getting rid of anxiety and head, you can fix it. Rid of stigmas, all of them you said, we ain't listening. Just remember, try to do your best, you can win this. Maurice Bernard, State of Mind. All right, this is State of Mind, and if you like what you see, which I know you're going to love what you see, subscribe, hit this button right here, bop, 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 yes, thank you very much. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, man. Today we have somebody, because I've been checking her out, she sings like an angel. She writes like Billy Joel. She's, I mean, her writing is, uh, well, I'm going to get into it with her when I, when I say her name, but uh, what happened <laughs> when I was looking over her stuff. Um, and uh, I can't wait to talk to her. She's dressed like a, like amazingly in this blue outfit that my mom would die for. Her name is Jillian Rossi. Hello. How thank are you? Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. <laughs> I'm good. That was a big compliment, the Billy Joel, you know. I mean, if I could be the next Long He's Island legend, I'm, I'm Right? There. Yeah. <laughs> um, what I want to do is just start out, like, telling me about yourself and how you grew up and all that stuff. Yeah. So I did grow up on Long Island, like Billy Joel, <laughs> um, South Shore, Nassau County. Yeah, yeah, if anyone, yeah. If anyone knows where that is. Yeah. Um, pretty normal, just, you know. How many brothers and sisters? I have one brother. I have a How mother, old is he? Father. He's 19. Yes, uh, I'm 23. So we're five or four or five years apart. I don't know. You guys are close? Um, yes, in a different way. He has autism, so... No! Yeah, why is that bad? <laughs> no, that's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, well, this is a mental health show, so, oh. so you know, yeah. that's... Am- I've, I've talked to a lot of people with, that, with autism and stuff, yeah. or know somebody that has autism. Yeah. How is that? How... how it's how- okay. I mean, growing up, it was definitely different in its own way, um... And it's gotten a bit harder as I've gotten older that, like, you know, my mom is kind of my best friend because I I feel that way because I don't have a sibling. Like, if people are like, oh, like, I'm really close to my brother. And, like, Andrew, his name's Andrew. We're we're close in our own way, but um, my mom is, like, a sibling to me and a mother because, And what about your father? Yeah, I'm close with my dad, too. He helps a lot with, like, the music business side of things. Um, He's learned through, like, books and stuff. He's one of, like, the smartest people. Oh, really? Yeah, and he loves music. He's in a dad band called B.O.D. They play... Are you um, serious? Yes, they play some bars in Manhattan called Wicked Willies and the New York City Marathon. Shout out, B.O.D. Yeah, so music's always been in my life. Yeah. that was a tangent from autism to my dad's band. No, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But what um, are the, what are the uh, what, what having autism? What is it? What does that mean? What is it? Is it? There's OCD. There's autism. Yeah. What is it exactly? Autism. So my brother, um, he definitely has OCD along with autism, uh-huh. but he it's more like developmental delay and stuff. Like he's 19, but he seems more like he's. 10 or 11. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. So he's not like the most socially normal yeah, yeah, person. Yeah, yeah, Not to say the wrong thing. I don't know what's right. No, that you're right about that. They're, um, they're, not, they're, they're not as social. Yeah. That's that because I read about autism too a little bit. Yeah. That's what it is. So. But yeah. it's not that. It's, it's, you can get through that. Yeah. I yeah. mean, he's, he's doing okay. He's yeah. not like a typical person, but he like functions in his own way, and yeah. he's doing really well now. Um, in terms of like, he's in a special class at school where they like teach you about. Um, jo- it's called like job sites. Like they work him at Panera in the outback in the back. Oh, where they really? Package, like the bread and butters and like the yeah. and the little baskets and stuff. And he's actually one of three kids who got chosen to do that program, but paid. So, so he's killing it. I'm gonna ask Andrew for my next, you know. That's nice. Dinner. Yeah. <laughs> so when did you start singing? Like, like, 
Let me tell you a little story about me when I, sure. I sang when I was little, but not like you. Uh, my parents didn't know about what to do. I used to, go, I used to have these parties, right? My, not me, my parents. And everybody would say, okay, it's time Maurice is going to sing. Nice. So I was like eight, nine years old, and I used to sing Ben, okay. Michael Jackson, because I had a high voice. But the difference is, maybe, maybe not, if my mom and dad could have figured out how to, or maybe they asked me and I said, no, I don't remember. But unlike you, you probably started singing little, and it was beautiful, and they, you know, cultivated it, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's really, that's cool that you used to sing as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little bit. But, yeah. Um, I was about 10 years old when people started like saying I was okay at singing. And somebody said, I was like singing in the back of my mom's friend's car. And she was like, um, oh, like you should get Jillian voice lessons. Like I think she's, she's pretty good at it. And my mom was like, really? Like, okay. Like, I'll, and I was like, mom, I want to sing. And she was like, okay. Like, so. We got me voice lessons, and I don't know if I'm supposed to say this on air. Who cares? But that person actually, they're my mom and that person aren't friends anymore. Oh, and really? The her son and her actually started getting a little like seemed to be like jealous of my oh. talent, and I bet she hopes she never told my mom that I was good at singing because now things are definitely better than than they. Oh my you know. goodness. I'm doing okay. It's good. I'm actually doing this for work. So shout out to her. Yeah. <laughs> um, so she introduced the, you to the yeah. singing and then said, but I don't want her to be that good. I guess. And now I don't want to be friends. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, little wow. things happened along the way where like that showed. But yeah. now I bet she's like, damn. I so th never... there, you don't communicate now? Mm -mm. No. It was a long, long That's, time But ago. it's always beautiful to have that revenge. Oh, yes. I'm a big... Big that revenge, that happened to me. Gal. That happened to me a lot when I first started acting. Yeah. In my hometown, everybody kind of uh, they just looked at me like I was an alien. Yeah. Like. Oh yeah, everybody would good. say like because I went to Berkeley College of Music, and when it was like decision day, everybody goes to Penn State or University of right, Michigan right. or whatever, and I was like, what the what Berkeley College of Music. Um, but the people who did know were like, wow, that's a really hard school to get into. That's She's really good, blah, blah, blah. Um, and people would ask my mom, like, oh, she's still doing that music thing? Yeah. And she was like, yeah. And then, like, when it actually kind of started becoming real, everybody accepted then it, it. Then it ch kind of changes. Of course, it? yeah. But, see, because if you were in, you were in Long Island, right? Mm -hmm. When you know, that was going on, yeah. Yeah, and, and I was in a small town. It's hard. Yeah. Because if you're living in L.A. or Manhattan, it's kind of normal yeah. if you say you want to be Everybody a singer. Everybody does something weird. Right. <laughs> and for me, it was difficult because these people are like, what are they, you, you know. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I go to Long Island all the time, yeah. or I have in the past. Yeah. Do appearances there. So I don't remember what the places are. but Oh, I mean, I used to work at a like a bar restaurant um, in an interesting area on Long Island. And people there were like super, I'm Italian, so I could say this, they were super guido and like juice head. And they were always like, well, you're going to be a singer. You're going to sing like Ariana Grande is on the stage. And I was like, <laughs> I was like maybe. What they the... didn't understand. So when did you, at what age did, I mean, it, when you were young, like at 10, did you know then, like for me in acting, let's say, modeling, I, I knew I was not going to make it. I was unsuccessful, <laughs> up too short, whatever. But when I got into acting, I knew it, even though I, I wasn't good Yeah. in the beginning. But I knew in here that this is it, right? Is that how you felt? At what age did you feel that? See, that's a good question. Yeah. I like that question. That's a good question. Let me pat myself on the back. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um... I'm trying to think, when I was ten, I then I started doing like musical theater, local theater shows oh. and stuff. Yeah, and that was okay. I didn't. I don't love theater. Broadway, hire me if you want one day. But I don't love theater as much yeah. as I love music. Right. Um, and like writing my own songs and being an artist versus being like a Broadway star yeah. type of thing. This was definitely not Broadway though. <laughs> it was like local theater. Um, and I did like high school theater up until my junior year of high school. 
I got into this arts high school on Long Island that was kind of random and like my school didn't want to send me there because we had a music program we had chorus but this was like specifically like singing like on your own and not like a choir type of program and my school my regular high school only sent kids for dance there they wouldn't send they wouldn't want to send me but my mom shout out diana rossi her name is diana rossi like diana ross (laughs) but yes i like that Um, yeah she is so used to like i guess not fighting with the school board but like pushing for things with the school board because of my brother and like things he would need and like classes he should be in. So she fought hard to get me in that arts high school. And, um, when I went there, I was very much, it was the first time in my life where like, I was the one of the bunch, like in chorus, I was always kind of looked over and like, like, Oh, like maybe I'll get a solo. Maybe I wouldn't like nobody was like, wow, Jillian's, amazing or whatever but at this art school every like I was that person and I kind of feel like weirdly guilty about it sometimes because I know how it feels to not be that person but at this place I was yeah that because person. because at the other places there wasn't probably a lot of talent maybe I don't know and when you go to a place where there's talent talent breeds talent yeah talent notes talent yeah and and but and that must have made you feel incredible right oh yeah I mean it was cool being like the hot shot or the star of the show and like they'd always give me a solo on like the concerts and whatever and I'd do some cool thing um but I was classically trained as a vocalist there which took my voice classically yeah and (laughs) this arts high school a lot of schools wouldn't send their students because again like everyone had a chorus program why would we pay money yeah the school board why would we pay money to send kids to go sing somewhere else and bus them there. It was like a half hour bus ride I would take every day for two years. Damn. Um, so some school districts that did send, it was kids who like some of them, like, I don't know if they like were an academic or some just like didn't love school that much, I think. So they chose to go to this school. <laughs> right. So I was the only person who would show up to classical voice training on right. like Mondays at 2 p.m. Like the only one. So I got like one on one training for like an entire year and it took my voice from like a six to a ten. Hundred percent. So what is classically tra- like opera? Like Oh, like opera. Yeah, like like oh mio vino caro. Oh, yeah. like hardcore, like I don't even know if that. And how do you get taught that? Through a opera singer named Eugenia. Shout out Eugenia. Really? Shout out Eugenia. I hated classical training, but you took my voice from six to ten. Wow. Yeah. So when you can do that kind of training, then you can do anything singing I guess. I mean, I was singing in Italian, like at opera, and I like... I don't do it anymore, but like that's no, no. But you now you you you're, you're yeah. confident. Yeah. That you, if somebody says, "Can you sing this?" Oh, come on, I sing. I sing opera. <laughs> yeah, right? Carol mio bien. I'm <laughs> mixing up the million words. Bien. You know yeah. the uh, what's uh, I forget his name. Uh, the Italian that's blind. Oh, I don't know if this is Andrea. Yeah. Kelly? Okay. Yeah. The I played his song at my wedding. Nice. And. Uh, it was. I'm, I'm. I'll just tell you this little thing, just because it's. I think you'll appreciate it. It was. We were getting married, me and my wife, outside of, outside, and the sky was black. Mm. And as soon as she came down in the white dress, with that song, I don't know what the song is. It's yeah. a beautiful song. The clouds parted. Oh. And I got pictures to prove it. That's nice. It was like the, the most God feeling I've ever felt in my life. Anyway, back to back to you because don't get in. Marie, stop talking about yourself. It's okay. Um, so, wow, you're classically trained. So then from there, you you left that school mm-hmm. at oh. what age? Uh, 18. Like oh, 18? School. Yeah, like high school. And then I went to Berkeley oh, College cause it of was Music. A high, yeah, right, yeah. right. Then you went where? Berkeley College of Music in Boston, where like John Mayer went and Charlie Puth and like Son of all a... the all the people. There's also some new people who are up and coming right now who went there as well. And you went there for how long? For all four years. I ah, I graduated in three years, but I graduated where nobody graduates, but I actually did, and so did Charlie Puth. So 
<laughs> so now you're 18, 19, I don't know how to. I graduated at 20 years old. I turned 21 like a week after my graduation during COVID. Okay, so now you're classically trained opera. <laughs> you, you graduate from that school where all these big singers, right, uh, went. I graduated from Berkeley, yeah. Right, Berkeley. I have a Berkeley school out here. Yeah, yeah. California. Yeah, yeah. And then what's your mind say? What What are you thinking there at that point? when you? Yeah, I mean, it was COVID, so it was like... Oh, yeah. no. I was like, what do I do? Um, but Noah, my manager, who I met in my second year at Berkeley through Facebook, it's a long story, <laughs> I'll tell that later, um, he was like, you know, you're out of school now, like, we're going to do this for real. And okay. I was like, okay, I don't have any money or a job or anything, but... Sure, let me take some of these songs I've written in, like, class and see if, you know, I could put them out. Um, and we did one song in 2019 together, but we were so little, like, it doesn't even count. But then my single that I put out called So What, I kind of counted as my first single. We we got a lot done together with that one, and it started building a little bit of momentum. Um, we had this whole plan. Is with that the viral one? No, that's the next okay. one. We had this whole plan with these TikTokers to like be in the music video virtually. And like, it was really cool. And honestly, I give it up to him for a lot of that because he pulled a lot of weight um, there, especially. And he's your manager? Yeah, he's yeah. from Long Island as well. All right. um, and he lives here and like in between here and New York. And he's a few years older than me. Um, and then I put out a song with, Another artist that was a duet, and then my next song like, completely changed my life and is the reason I get to live in L.A. Is that the one that says, grown-ass man hurt? No, that's a different one that also went a little viral. Okay, but, so yeah. now I'm going to tell you what I was going to tell you. So I looked all your, you know, obviously I looked at your stuff. Yeah. And your songs are great. Thank and you. And your writing is, you know, great. So what song is it? I think it's So What? I get because there was a song. I was listening to all your, I looked at all your videos like I'm a stalker. Okay. And there was Greg, Greg. And then there was one that was slower, more, more acapella somewhat. So what? Or, I mean, Fever Dream is pretty slow too, but that's the one that like blew up and changed my life. Which one was it called? Fever Dream. I mean, I kept going back to find it i couldn't find it because it, it it choked me up it okay. got me maybe so what i it's, think it was so what yeah because i went back it's my least favorite song of mine. it is <laughs> now and like a do you have a video of that where it's you're in the car and it's just you kind of singing it without no that's fever dream that's the viral song really yeah I think now i need to hear it yeah it's kind of slower yeah it's slow and it would it would choke me up. Yes, it's sad. It's about a relationship ending or a situation chip that you. That's wasn't the one. Real. I, yeah. I don't think I looked up Fever Dream. Oh, that that's Fever Dream. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's my dog. That's yeah. okay. Um, She's crying to Fever Dream. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's the song. I mean, I really hit me. Thank you. And that's a trip. Not that I'm because I'm easy to cry, but. Uh, you know, I'm listening. That's it. Yeah, I think that is it. The chorus you would recognize. That is it. You because come it would... over text at midnight. Oh, it's your song, right? Because yeah. we can put it on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, right on. Sing it a little bit. It's like, you come over, text at midnight. Rolling out of bed for your lies. Putting glitter on my blind eyes. Loving you wasn't as it seemed. That's like, a bit that's of beautiful, man. Thank you. You're choked up. I'm a little bit teary eyed. <laughs> I'm not joking. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, so anyway, I, but so what? Uh, I love too. Thank you. Right? Yeah. That's a, another Now, what's one. up with you and, and breaking up with people and then you write? Is that what happens? Do you, like, yeah. look at a guy and say, I want to go out with him and I can't wait to break up so then I can write a great song? No. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, so, it's so bizarre who I write about. I mean, it's, like, specific 
people that like just give me this like crazy like hit you like a truck like yeah. feeling in some way and usually they're people I don't even actually end up with like I don't even actually they never become my boyfriend yeah. or, oh really yeah it's like people I date for a little or like I like them more than they like me type of situation oh. and it's like the thrill of like <laughs> I don't know, anxiety yeah. and butterflies yeah. that are actually bad. Uh, but, like, my boyfriend now, like, I love him. He's an amazing guy. I've written, like, two songs about him. Whereas, like, some of these other people, I've written, like, tons. And I, like, create them into characters. that they're like, Because, like, one of the people I write most of the songs that are out about are a few. And, like, upcoming certain ones as well reached out to me singing my one of my songs and was like which well, the one wasn't even about him that he was singing and he was like oh like love the song haha and um yeah like, how do these how do these guys did, did they he that one i don't know if i should say great guys not that great of a guy right but do they get he upset gets, I, like i don't know i think like the guys that i write songs about like are the type of guys to like love everything that it's about them type of thing i understand like, big, yeah. like oh look at me and that's that person but what sure. if you had a line in your song that said he was a bad kisser i don't how know how would he feel then i don't know i don't remember what the kissing him felt like it was so five <laughs> years ago and we didn't even it wasn't even my boyfriend right right uh but we definitely yeah like he that one has been through the ringer with my music the songs that aren't even out yet Poor guy. Damn. Yeah. Now, with, with somebody that you love, mm -hmm. I think it's going to maybe, you're going to have even more emotional, right, with him. Yeah. I mean. Forget uh, breaking up because I don't want you to go there. Yeah, right? no. But just as you're with him during the, the, the time, it's going to be very emotional. Maybe you could write something about that relationship. Yeah, I did. I've written a few. They're not out yet. Um they're a little, like, I'm not, like, the biggest, like, sappy songwriter. Like, I don't like writing about love. I like writing about, like, I don't know, like, passion and anger and, yeah, like, yeah. that stuff. So do you think about the music first and then the then you start writing? Or is it that you got, you got a, something in writing-wise? Depends. It Sometimes it starts with a title. I'm a big title writer. Like, I just have a bunch of titles and ideas. And especially if somebody, like, sparks something in me, like... I will I will go balls to the wall writing like 50 titles like a day and like really? I'll pick one for like when I do writing sessions out here and I've been writing a lot by myself lately and it's been nice. So you write t like you you're just thinking about stuff all the time then you write it down. I pick. think too much. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm the biggest overthinker ever. It's so bad. <laughs> and you just write it on a on a paper? Yeah. You have a song that has uh Jake Gyllenhaal in there. What what Oh, that's was just a little TikTok song. Oh, it was? Yeah, it's not out. I just put it on TikTok when, like, Taylor Swift's album was going viral. Yeah. I like to keep up with the trends sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Um, and I wrote a little little ditty <laughs> about, like, like using Jake Gyllenhaal as a concept because Taylor Swift's, like, red album was all about Jake right. Gyllenhaal. And I, that was the time where that was, like, going viral. So I did a little thing. So that was the early part of you with the TikToks and stuff. Yeah, it was kind of in the middle. Oh, kind of in the middle. Yeah. Wow. Now, so what? Which yes, we talked early. about. Right. We, I love, I love the song. Thank you. And, and, uh, and the video is great. Was that the one inspired by a friend with mental health? Yes. See, I got yes. got that right. No. Yeah. And how, tell me about how that came about. Yeah, I mean, a friend and I at the same time were kind of going through a rough patch. What 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 kind of rough patch? I was struggling with, like, really bad anxiety. That's what and, I have. Yeah. It just comes and goes in, like, really bad waves. Um, and it was kind of like a song to myself and uh, my friend who was also struggling with anxiety. Um, just to say, like, it's okay. Like, everything's going to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. Let's talk about, you know, because that's, that's uh, I don't yeah. know if you know anything about, that's what I've been talking about for 30 years. Yeah. Anxiety. Uh, I'm bipolar. I've been in a mental oh. institution. Oh, I'm so sorry. I've, it's horrific stuff has happened. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've gotten off two planes. Oh wow. So, I'm gonna tell you something right now about um, what what just happened, and it could help you. Mm -hmm. And if these people don't sponsor me, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, 
I got on a plane just now to go do some shows in uh, New York. You know, pretty it was important. And the terror hit me. Yeah. And it's horrific. It's scary. Yeah. I call him Freddy Krueger. Yeah. Get off the plane, get off the plane, get off the plane. Because I flew for the first time without my wife. Mm. So I, I did everything I tell people to do. Distract yourself with the magazine, with Twitter, with breathing. Mm -hmm. And I was sent this thing called Comigo that you should, okay, so took it out of my pocket. I've never used it before. And I was very close to getting off for the third time. And I did it. <sighs> it's an inhaler. Mm. Gone. Wow. I need that right now. <laughs> Gone. Wow. And I started crying because I'd, I wasn't going to feel that feeling. I never, that's never happened. Yeah. It doesn't just, you know, it doesn't just go away like boom. Yeah. You, it's a little goes and then you keep breathing, you know, you know, then it goes, you know, it goes away. Although yeah. I had, I've had anxiety that was 24 seven for four months. It yeah. Was that. I, that was me for like six to eight months. Yeah. You when had? I was 19. Yeah. It was so bad. So you were, you had thoughts of ending your life too? Um, no, not like as bad as that, but it was a lot of like. Just couldn't get rid of it. Just couldn't, and like honestly, like recently, I've been feeling it again a little bit. Just like a pit in my stomach yeah, yeah, yeah. all the time. Yeah, like like needing to breathe. Yeah, and like racing thoughts type of thing. And it's so bad, and I like need it to stop. But <laughs> so. it's but it's good that you have music. Yeah, because you can Definitely release. Helps. You know, like me with acting, and yeah. even this. This has been my therapy for two years. Wow. Uh, I don't even go to a therapist, and I've been fantastic. That's good. When. Two years ago, I was ready to go. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but this thing, and I'm not going to say it again because you better sponsor me. Um, Calm and go. It works. Was it like a drug? No, it, it's got, it's like an inhaler, like for asthma. Mm -hmm. And you just take and you see these lights. You breathe till you see the lights. And then once the light's done, breathe again. And I think what it does is, because you're looking at the lights, it distracts your mind also, yeah. and there's a scent in there that whatever it is, I, it says do it for three minutes. I did it for a minute. Gone. Wow. That's good to know. So Doing right. my makeup helps me. Because you're distracted. Yeah. Yeah. When's the last time you had anxiety? This morning, right before I came here. No. Yeah, so bad. Recently. But, like, I'm so good at, like, masking it. Like, so good at So it. good. I know. It's even when I was in, like, the deep depths of it, like, a few years ago, like, I could go to class and, like, do this. And it's always heavy, right? It's just and, there. It's and just always ugly. There. It's not that much there right now. but No, no, because we're interacting yeah. and we're cool and you're cool with me. And yeah. So we're forgetting, you're forgetting all that stuff. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. That's yeah. that's good to know. And, I, and I'll and i hook you up with uh, Comigo. Thank you. It's kind of expensive. Please. I'm down. Um, How expensive are we talking? I think it's like 200 bucks or something. All right. That's not that bad. If it was like $4,000, I'd be like, all right. No, I tell you what, though. If it were four thousand bucks, still get it. I would get it because yeah. that's what it did to me. Wow! And I even got a picture um, right after it, I was crying to tell the audience to, the, you know, the, this whatever. It, it it worked like a like a champ, man. Yeah. So if it worked for me, it's going to work for you, and it's going to work for everybody. But anyway, so you have like a billion. I'm exaggerating. Streams. Yeah. <laughs> on what? On just every Spotify. Or throughout Spotify, probably around like 75 to 100 million right now. Streams. Okay, hold on. Total. But that's still Yeah. a ton, no? Yeah, it's a lot. I'm a it's funny cuz I my favorite thing to do in music is perform live. But I'm I'm starting to like do more shows and go on tours and stuff, but I'm a way bigger streaming artist right now. 
than a touring artist, which I feel like it should be the opposite, being that, like, I love to perform and I'm thinking But what is summer. streaming like? I mean, what's the difference? I don't, I don't know. What's It's just how many times people listen to your songs. That's a, But that's a ton. Yeah, I know. And I think, yeah, I have around, like, 1.2 million people who listen to my music month per month. And then what's the next step? Getting to 5 million, getting to 10 million, getting a hit, which is on the radio, gets to a single song. At what about a million. record deal? They don't do that anymore? <sighs> it's a long, weird thing to, in today's world. I could, you know what? I love talking about the business side of music. Ah, and that's yeah. a big thing with me because I'm, somebody once said, Jillian, you're not an artist, you're a smart artist. Yeah. And I am. Um, so I'll talk about that to help anyone who's either yeah, struggling with like, just music business advice like so basically record labels in today's world just look for the next hot song that's blowing up on tiktok and they sign you and then they don't care they don't give a shit and when fever dream went viral i had every record label besides three of them shout out to those three i still like you yeah. <laughs> um that reached out to me and were like oh my god like this and that i went through seven meetings with one of them one of them sent eight people to my show and no. they butter you up and they they tell you you're the greatest thing of all time and then they don't care and then they don't care and and then you, i had another viral song called give me a reason and they'll come back and oh and then we like this one too blah 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 and then they just don't care. I see it every time somebody has a big song on TikTok. The labels go flocking, and then somebody will actually sign to one of them, and then you never hear that person again. Whereas wow. I'm in a situation where I did a publishing deal first as a songwriter, so I'm signed to a company as a songwriter and an artist on the publishing side. It's, it's a confusing thing because... Um, the record deal side is has to do with your masters, which are the master recordings of your music. And owning your masters is, my lawyer has taught me a lot, is one of the most important things in this industry um, until you get a big enough offer from a record company where, like, you can't turn it down, like, 10 million, 20 million type deals. So I did a publishing deal that I didn't give away my masters and this these people like help with my calendar and they put me in sessions with bigger writers and stuff, but I didn't sign my life away to one of the big Good. corporations. I've also done two distribution deals for lucrative money, like kind of like what a record deal would pay some artists. It depends like right. the level of how bad they want you. But this dis distributor really likes to have me. I make them a lot of money and we did a four song deal my music recouped that deal in a year instead of two years. They quadrupled the amount for 10 songs, and I just signed that deal with that company. And how they make money is they take a percentage off the top of streaming, but I still own all my masters. Therefore, a record label could come in and buy them out and meet my lawyer, put a buyout in there, could buy them out, um, them would own some of my masters, but I could still own the ones that... I didn't sign away. It's a whole thing. And I've learned so much through, like, my lawyer and um, just – I used to be like, I want to sign so bad. I want to sign so bad. And now I'm like, I'm good. Yeah. If I can get the type of money that a record label could offer me without giving away my master's for life or 15 to 20-year yeah, licensing yeah. deal, I'm good. And that's where I'm at right now. Um and it's, I'm very thrilled to be here because some people don't even know about the distribution option or they no. think, you know, those companies are great. But at this point in time, like a few years ago, I could see how a distributor like wouldn't be able to do as much as a label. The labels have all the radio connections or yeah. whatever. Now, everybody's just a bank. Every single person. They just want to invest and hopefully make money back. And some of the big companies are like, all right, if we give this person this amount of money and they don't make it back... We have Michael Jackson's catalog making us seven right. million a day, so who cares? So is it like when when if somebody sign like the record labels like, like agents if they sign big big uh, agents if they sign an actor and he doesn't hit right away they don't care anymore they don't care anymore. I but see, if they hit, oh, then everybody well everybody flocks when everybody <laughs> when, when you're hot of course right. like you know like I'm in a writing phase right now I'm not like pushing on TikTok as much as I used to 
which I'm getting into that again because I've just written like a million grit songs to push on TikTok. Um, but when you're hot or you're viral or you're streaming like a monster, like every like things are much yeah. different than when you're slow. But you get paid on TikTok? Um, no, nah, I, I nah. but I get the benefits of Exposure. going viral and then people finding my music I to pre-save it. it or save it or go listen to it. Um, and yeah, it's been because YouTube you get paid, but that's kind of yeah, that w- w- or Facebook pays. Yeah, I'm gonna try to start posting on like everything again. Yeah, um, yeah. But you've done and your videos are. I mean, I I dig your videos. Thank man. you. Right. Thanks. Yeah. It's like real videos. Some of them. <laughs> yeah. Some of them are. I mean, I far. think so. What was a video? Oh yeah, that was a music video. Yeah, music. It's like video. the last music video I did, which is kind of sad. I need to put another one out. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Um, what do you, so what about rejection? How, how do you, do you take rejection well or is it? No, <laughs> I was in, I'm very open. I don't even mind anymore. I used to be Good so for scared. you. Um, I was in talks with a label in September where they were very into me. They flew from New York to LA Dang. to have me meet with their CEO in their big office and all the stuff. And I really loved the guy who really liked my music, at least at first. He was a New Yorker, Italian, friends with my lawyer. Yeah. It like looked like it was gonna make sense. They, I've had three meetings with them. He discussed money with my lawyer and then they pulled out. They said no. And I was devastated. Oh my god! My lawyer called my dad and was like, "Is she okay?" I was just on the phone with her. Wow. Um, I was sad, but they would have offered me double what I got from my distributor, but ownership for le- forever, ownership wow. forever. Whereas I'm on a two year license with full ownership for half. I'm fine with that. Right now. You're not giving up that ownership for life thing. No, never. No, I mean, unless you're going to give me, like, a ton of money right, where I it's agree. worth it. I where agree. there's a girl um, who I won't say her name because I don't know if she even knows I know this. But she had a very big moment and every label was involved. And she waited and waited and waited to sign. And she's younger than me. Um, and she signed for, like, $8 million. That's when you sign. Damn. That's when you sign. When it's what that. about one million? For for how long does a million dollars last? Like how long does that last? <laughs> I get it. I yeah. get it. Yeah. I Damn. mean, if that company in September that I was talking to offered me that, I would have taken it. But I'm glad that it didn't work out. Now. Well, you know, it seems like you got your head on your shoulders. Today it's off a little, but it's usually on. You're smart about a lot of stuff, Thank so you. You, that's what you got to do. Yeah, and labels should be scared of me. Exactly, I know too much. I yes, really do. and that's the way it should be. Yeah, because you're not going to just sign just because it it seems right. Yeah, I used to. Oh my god, I would have signed for like twenty thousand right. dollars three years ago. That's what I'm saying. Not even kidding. Like I used to cry that like my friends were getting entry level drops. And I, like, had no money. And I would have signed for, like, 50K, not even knowing what I was signing or what right. it meant. See, now at 23, yeah, you got it. You got it. Now I'm, like, $10 million. <laughs> <laughs> Very different. But we'll see if it ever gets to that point. I hope it does. And you sang for Bill- Billy Joe. I did when so, I was 16. What was that like, man? Well, my arts high school that I talked so highly of was actually going under and needed funding because no schools would send the kids. And Mr. Billy Joel, Mr. Long Island, donated like $2 million to the school to keep it open and um, did a master class. And the principal of the school at the time was like, Jillian, your question should be, can I play you a song? Because I think, you know, like I said, at that school, I was very liked. And um, I raised my hand. And I asked him to play an original song. What did you? Oh, original yeah, song. Yeah, a long time ago. You'll you'll never hear the yeah. song. And um, I sang it for him, and he was very nice, very complimentary. And um, yeah, it was a really. Cool I'd love to see that. I have it on Facebook. I could show you after. Oh, you did? Yeah. You know, I had a uh, this a friend of mine, Melissa. She was a fanatic Billy Joe fan. Oh, so are my parents. Oh, they are? Yeah. Like, 
like ten concerts. Yeah. Like everything Billy Joe. She if she watches this, she's gonna be like, damn, mm. just that you're talking about that you sang for him. Yeah. Um damn, I mean I don't I don't really have much left. Oh, oh, one more thing. I just wanna know grown ass man hurt me like a boy would. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I came up with that song. That oh, you lyric. know? I did. I, I pretty sure I wrote that with like four other people. And then it was produced by another person. So there's a lot of people involved in that song. But that part I actually did write. And I wanted that part to be the chorus. Uh. It's the pre-chorus, but I wanted it to be the chorus. I kept saying it over and over again. And they were like, that's cool. But like, I think we need a bigger chorus, which I agree with. But that was the part that went viral. So oh. I was right a little bit. Um, and um, it was, it's my second least favorite song. <laughs> I'm very mean to my songs. Well, you're not liking the songs I'm liking. I know. Um, but it did go viral, so I understand why. <laughs> it's it's cool. We're, we're civil, me and like a boy. Yeah. Um, but it's like you were you were grown up, but you hurt me like, you know, like yeah, an eight-year-old would hurt me. Like, yeah, yeah. Sure. Not an eight-year-old. Like an immature guy gotcha, would like yeah. break a heart. And you were you were with one of those guys then, or not, or not? You just made that. I up? write about something from like five years ago. Wow. I mean, I don't care anymore, like yeah. at all. But um, still with me. My mom made a joke about. <laughs> she, this is a funny joke. You'll like this. She was like, I won't say their names. I'll say blah blah blah. She's like blah blah blah. Got you a car and an apartment. Maybe this next guy will buy you a house. <laughs> <laughs> so. I, I, I get my bag. Yeah. I, use, I use men for her to get of course get song material. And yeah. Not my boyfriend, though. He's a, he's a good one. No, no, you can't do that. Well, you can write sweet, yeah. really sweet stuff. Yeah. All right, Jillian. It's been... Uh, I, I just want to say the state of mind audience that I love talking to... I don't have a lot of young people. And... I love talking to the young people. But this conversation with Jillian was great. But what I really love when we got into the anxiety because I could tell she's she needs she needed it mm-hmm. for that second. And uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate your talent. Thank you. Your singing and your great writing and all that stuff. Um, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Stay to my bye.